Hi everyone, it's Michael, and it is time for the December 2017 Orchid Collection update. Now, I'm going to be perfectly honest, I thought that December was going to be a very uneventful month for me. Um, I just figured that we're in the middle of winter, things aren't really in active growth mode, so I was just going to have to wait until spring to really see things reinvigorate. But I could not have been more mistaken, and I'm so excited to show you all of the positive momentum forward that's kind of happening with my plants. Um, but in terms of what I'm doing this month differently than what I was doing last month, there is literally no difference. Um, I am continuing to not repot my plants unless it is absolutely necessary. Um, the reason being is they're not in active growth mode. It's going to be more difficult for them to recover from the trauma that is a repot. So I'm leaving them alone unless absolutely necessary. As in the case of my Spathoglottis pucata, which I just repotted, um, and I, I'll link a video below about why I did that. Um, but. Beyond that, I am continuing to flush with plain tap water. I am feeding my orchids at a constant feed of around 125 to 150 ppm. Um, unless, of course, I'm seeing mineral buildup, in which case I switch back to distilled water until the mineral buildup has resolved. Um, and then I'm also not doing any chemical treatments because who needs it, am I right? Um, now there's two more things I really want to talk about. The first is I'm so proud of myself, you guys. This is month two, no orchid fatalities. And that may seem like a really small thing, but it, it's a big deal for me because transitioning your plants to semi-hydroponics, there's going to be some attrition, there's going to be some die-off, and it really, really scared me. And I thought, oh my geez, what am I doing? I just, I really thought I was compromising the well-being of all of my plants. So to see things kind of stabilizing and leveling out um, has been a really, really positive sign for me. So I'm thrilled about that. And the other thing I wanted to talk to you guys about was social media. So I do have other social media accounts and I kind of use them in different ways. So I wanted to kind of fill you in on what those ways are. Um, I have a Michael's Orchids Instagram account. And um, what I use that one for is primarily to give you in between updates. So if something really interesting starts to happen, uh, I'll take a, a quick little 30 second video of it and I'll post it on the Instagram. So you can kind of get in between updates if you're interested and that's uh, at Michael's Orchids. Um, on Facebook, I primarily use Facebook to interact, to ask questions and connect with the audience. So um, I'll say like, hey, I'm gonna do a Bloom profile. What are the things that you really wanna know? Because I'm always aiming to kind of tailor my message to you guys and make sure that I'm giving you what you wanna know. Um, and my intuition usually guides me, but sometimes my intuition is wrong as I've learned over the course of my very odd and awkward life. Um, and the last one is, of course, Twitter. Um, I don't, you know, Twitter's not my thing, I don't know. But I do have it linked so it'll notify you every time I post a video or if there's new content. So if you're a Twitter person, that's accessible to you. My handle is the same on every account. It's at Michael's Orchids. If you feel so compelled, go ahead and uh, follow those accounts. All right, now I'm gonna take you on a tour of the apartment. I'm gonna show you where everything is spatially and then we will jump in and talk through the plants one by one. All right, guys. My husband is literally hiding inside of there because he does not want to come out. Justin, just say hello. No. Okay, people are gonna think that you're a figment of my imagination. He's very shy, you guys. Um, so in terms of where the orchids are located, over this way I have some of the ones in dormancy. So I have uh, my catacetum types down here. Up here I of course have my pride and joy of the moment. This is my Catlea Purple Blue Hawaii. Um, over here I've got my Nelly Eiler. Up there I've got a Phalaenopsis. Down here I've got some of the seedlings and uh, keikis, including the one of my mom's. Um, then over this way I have all of the um, all of the little seedlings from my flasks. They appear to be doing well, but we'll talk more about that. Up here I have um, a Paphiopedlum. I've got my Eulafia. Up there I've got my Bulbophyllum, my Ascascenda, and I've got my Epidendrum. Down here I've got my Lidicea discolor. Back in that corner in the beige tray is where I have my Cypripedium A. coli. Down here I've got another frag, my Dendrobium, which is also dormant at the moment. This is pretty much the same as it was before. I've got my Maltonia Sunset, my Maxillaria Tenifolia. I've got another Dendrobium, another frag. Down here I've got my Psychopsis, Catlea, Wilsonara, Banfieldara, and another Bulbophyllum. Um, Phil, looking beautiful as always. Um, moving on to the bedroom. Over this way I have some foul types right over here. Those are non-orchids, but they are really pretty. Um, over this way, I have my Degar Moara. I have a couple more fowls. I have Oncidium type, Zygopedlum, Zygonesia, and up there I've got my Alisara. And finally, I have two Oncidiums in this little window right here. 
Starting with number one, I have my No ID Mini Fell, and you can see it's just starting to put down some green root tips, but the leaf size is so much smaller than what it should be, so once that really gains momentum, it'll start to parallel the old leaf size. So that is what I wish for for this guy. Number two, my Catlea Haiyuan Gold. This guy is just, I've tried so many different things to get him to just kind of jumpstart his adaptation, but he is still just struggling so much. Um, I tried the teabag method, which I will link below, um, and he started to put out some new roots and then he just stopped again. So um, I'm hoping for the best for this guy, but we will just have to wait and see. I think patience will be a virtue with him. Um, otherwise he'll just die. Ugh. Um, over here, I've got my Wilsonara Aloha Sparks Halloween. And again, it's just living its best life. You guys, I checked this one so compulsively for flower spikes because look how established the root system is. It just like will not chill. It has no chill. But um, I'm hoping for the best for this guy and I eagerly anticipate seeing some blooms. Over here is number four. This is my No ID Oncidium. And again, this guy has done really, really well. Every single bulb it has is very plump and very happy, which is great news. Um, and even the division of it is doing just incredibly. You can see, look how plump the suitables are. It put out that suitable. It's putting out a new growth over this way, as you can see. But just look at the bottom too. When I lift it up, you can see how much it's put down roots. Um, over here, we jump to number seven in the collection. This is my Dendrobium to my kids. And this guy is currently in dormancy. I was really anticipating this to go not very well, but the pseudobulbs are still super plump. They are happy, they're green. Um, so I haven't had any issues that's adapted to being in dormancy. It's done just fine. So I am just eagerly anticipating to see some buds swelling up at the top of these canes, and then we will know it is time to start rewatering. Over this way, I have number eight. This is my Banfieldara Mystic Maze. Also used to be super, super desiccated in the bulbs but has since totally plumped back up and put out this entire new growth. And just like, look how lovely it is. So I'm also looking forward to seeing a spike from this guy hopefully soon. And this took a long time to put down a root system, but once it did, the root system just exploded. Now it's just going everywhere, so that's wonderful. Um, number nine in the collection is my mom's cakey. This one is just halted, and I'm just hoping and hoping and praying it pulls through. Um, but it has been pouting now for a couple months, so I'm hoping for the best for that guy. This is my Psychopsis Mendenhall Hildos, and this one's been doing really, really well, but what I'm concerned about is the mottled leaves are starting to fade a bit, which is usually an indicator of not a high enough light level, so I transitioned it to receiving just as much light as my cat Leia, um, or as my cat Leia's, and it's still kind of losing that coloration. So I need to do some more research and figure out exactly why that's happening. But I'm hoping this guy will spike for me. Please, 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 please soon because once it spikes, it can stay in spike for 10 years and it is a sequential bloomer. Wouldn't that just be amazing? Then over here, I have number 12. This is my Ox Lottery Prince Phalaenopsis. Uh, this was a rescue from an, a garden center on the clearance rack and it's just doing so well, you guys. It just took a long time to put down its roots. But now that it is, it can't be stopped. So I'm also looking forward to seeing a spike from this guy. Picking back up with number 13, this is my No ID Frag. And you can see it's having a bit of an issue with um, the tips of the leaves being burned. Now, I think this is because I've been watering with a constant feed and I need to actually kind of back off. So I think I might resume alternating distilled water for this one. Um, but if you look at the new growths, the new growths are all totally fine. They're perfectly healthy. So I'm just not quite sure why it's happening on the oldest growth, but maybe it's just old. No, I think it's something that I'm doing. Um, then moving on, this is number 15 in the collection. This is the Sogo Yukodon Phalaenopsis. This is the subject of the four month adaptation video and you can see it is continuing to just do amazing things. It's super, super happy. It's putting down its roots, it's living its life. It's just a happy little camper. So um, and it's even putting down a new baby root right there. So cute. Um, so that guy's doing really well. Now this one has just been so, like a really, really frustrating mystery for me. This is my Dapper Dots Catacetum. Um, this is Dapper Dots Nicolasa Tavares hybrid. And I think I finally identified that this is a new growth and not a flower spike, which breaks my heart. It's just too thick at the base to be a flower spike. And like you can see how it's starting to fan out. That's a new growth, so it'll probably start putting down roots soon. Um, but that's great because its dormancy was super short. And um, I'll let you know when I pull it out of dormancy. Moving on to number 17, this is my Ask Ascenda. Also just winning at adaptation. It's got roots in the bottom, it's got roots up top. It's just doing really well. I'm just hoping to see a spike from this guy soon since it is getting so well adapted. But it's putting out new leaves, 
on both of the growths, so that's a great sign. Over here is number 18. This is my Zygopedlum. And you guys, I get the most questions about this one because I did a video about helping my um, Zygopedlum adapt and I had to cut off all of the roots because they fully rotted out. But I just wanted to take you in and show you. Look, it's putting out a new growth right there, which is really exciting and wonderful. That itself is a new growth. And there's a new growth right under here. I don't know if you guys can see it right in the center of the screen. Um, but then if I take you down, you can see the roots are actually starting to venture down, down into the medium. So that's really, really wonderful. It's been a very slow going process, but this has adapted just fine, even having zero roots going into this transition. So um, that's kind of impressive to me. On to number 19 and number 20. I'm just going to group these together because these continue to frustrate me. There is just not a whole lot of forward momentum. Since I've been watering with just plain distilled water, it has helped resolve a lot of the mineral buildup, but these guys just aren't doing much of anything. Again, this one started two flower spikes and then it aborted them, which broke my heart in half. But I just need to, I think when it hits spring, I'm gonna repot them. I wonder if there's just too much mineral content in the pellets and it's just not constructive for these guys. So these seem to merit a repot, but again, I will not do that until it is active growth mode in the spring. Over here, I have number 21. This is my Paphiopedlum Pinocchio Lowy Hybrid. And look at that new growth on it, you guys. It's doing really, really well. It's super cute. And I just wonder how long it's gonna take until it's a big enough fan for it to be able to produce a spike because I'm really, really eager. Um, I had to save this one from Brown Rot. I will link the video below. Um, but it made a wonderful recovery, put out this new growth. So I'm just looking forward to um, seeing blooms again. And then over this way, I have my Maxillaria tenifolia. And as you know, I've had an ongoing struggle with this one, but something peculiar is happening um, because I thought this plant was really, really struggling and not doing well. But look at how much it's generating new pseudobulbs. All of the new growths are maturing and they're becoming their own little pseudobulbs. And it's just kind of, it was unexpected for me, especially given that I thought they were all doing really, really poorly, but they're making little pseudobulbs everywhere. So I don't actually know what's going on with this plant, but I'm just gonna continue doing what I'm doing and um, hope for the best. Picking back up with number 24, this is my Meltonia Sunset. And I am so thrilled to see that it is making some really significant strides because look at this root system expanding downward. Those are all the brand new roots and it is finally acclimating nicely to semi-hydroponics. It has a million and one new growths coming out. Um, There's some accordioning that happened um, when it didn't have any new roots out yet and it now has, is well, at least it's starting to subside. So that's great news. Um, I cannot wait for a spike from this guy. If this is anything like the pictures, I think this might be my favorite orchid, um, which is a bold statement to say, never having seen it bloom in person. But I just think that it is stunning. So I'm really, really hoping I can share some blooms with you soon. Um, on to number 25. This is my Epidendrum Green Hornet. You guys, this one has the flower sheaths down in there, um, but I'm just waiting for it to develop. So I think we'll see blooms from him soon. Um, I thought he wasn't doing very well, but it's just got roots everywhere now. So I'm pretty happy about that. On to 26, this is my Alisara Stellar and uh, also doing really, really well. It's putting down roots like crazy. It's kind of annoying me how it is so tilted. Um, that's not really my thing, like look at it. But it just leaned so much for the light. So now I reversed it so it's leaning towards the light. So hopefully it'll correct itself and I don't have to repot it. But that's again, one of the lessons I'm learning is I need to stop repotting things because they bother me aesthetically. It's like only when it's a need. So I'm getting better about that. Um, on to 27. This is my Phragmopedium, Memoria Maritza Rolando. And just look at this new fan that it is growing. It put it out so quickly and it's doing so well. So that makes me really, really excited. Number 28, of course, I have my Catlea Purple Blue Hawaii. I just did a bloom profile on this guy and I just, couldn't be enjoying it any more than I am. It just smells like heaven. Um, I'll link the video to the Bloom profile below so you can check that out if you haven't already seen it, but this is just a real stunner. Number 29, I have my Ulafia Petersi, which continues to evade my understanding or progress or any positive indicators of success. So I am just kind of waiting this one out. Literally nothing has happened with this one since I burned it. So I'm just hoping for the best. It has the most gorgeous flowers and I would really, really love to allow it to live to procure those flowers. But um, right now it's just struggling. So I'm continuing to do research. There's not a whole lot of literature on this orchid. So I'm just kind of feeling it out and trying to take cues from the plant. It's not giving me a whole lot to work with though. So um, I'm hoping for the best. 
Number 30 is, of course, my Sipper PDMA call. They're currently covered in snow, and I'm just hoping for the best with those. So we'll move on to number 31. This is my Pacific Wild Willy Bingo. I don't remember the exact name. But this is my Oncidium. It's doing really, really well. And look how fast that new growth developed, you guys. It's a pretty sizable, it's a pretty sizable little thing now. Um, it is starting to lose some of the leaves on the oldest suitable, which is pretty standard. It made me panic though, because I had it in a window and I thought it could be because it's so cold. But um, it seems to be faring just fine. All of the other leaves are just perfect. So I'm not gonna worry too much about it. Then I have number 32. This is my Cloessia Rebecca Northern also giving me zero indicators of anything. I feel like it's fine because the bulb is still plump, um, but it has now been in dormancy for a month and it's not showing me anything. Um, so hoping for the best for this guy. Now this one, I thought I was, I was this close. I was on the verge of heartbreak with this one because you can see this old cane has shriveled up and died. And then behind it, this cane is in the process of shriveling up and dying. And I just thought to myself, oh no, um, none of the roots were viable when I transitioned it to semi-hydroponics because I potted it too high in the medium, so all of the roots dried out. But I am happy to report that, because I repotted it with, as a matter of necessity, it is starting just now to create new roots and venture downwards. So the new growth is going to be the growth that saves it all. I don't think I'll see blooms from this guy for maybe a year or two because I really did some serious harm to the plant and it's been set back significantly but at least I'm seeing some positive signs of moving forward. And over here I have my Ladicia Discolor. This is my jewel orchid from my boss. And it's doing really well. It just keeps putting out leaf after, new, after leaf. But you know what bothers me? I just like, I need to change the container it's in because its growth habit is to grow horizontally. It's a terrestrial orchid and it really does just grow like that. So I kept repositioning it. I kept, you know, changing the light source so the light source would be over here in the hopes of correcting that tilt but it's just not doing it. It just like wants to grow that way and that annoys me. But again, part of growing orchids is learning patience and I feel like this orchid specifically is challenging me in a constructive way that is simultaneously infuriating. So there's that. Picking back up with number 35, we have quite an unexpected surprise. My Burgiara Nelly Eiler is in spike. Now this is surprising, especially considering that I clipped back the last flower spike on December 4th, and today is December 27th. That's a fast turnaround time. But what my Nelly Eiler represents is the rare instance where the transition to semi-hydroponics is really, really positive and really constructive for a plant. The full root system it had is still viable in semi-hydroponics, which allowed it to not bud blast when I transitioned it, and also is allowing it to spike right now. Um, and I think it's site specific because this orchid does like cooler temperatures, it likes increased moisture and humidity around the root system. So I think this was an upgrade for it, but that's why I don't clip off all of the uh, roots when I transition orchids to semi-hydroponics because sometimes they don't all rot out. Sometimes they do really, really well. So this is a prime example of that phenomenon. On to 36, this is my SVO Black Pearl Fred Clarkiara. And um, look how cute it is. It's been in dormancy now for a month. Now there were two other bulbs that I divided from this that I recently dissected. I will link the video below, but um, everyone told me that they were rotting. I wanted to believe that they could produce a new growth, but I was wrong. So I had to <laughs> dissect them and discard them. But look at the little cakey on it. Oh, this one is so cute. And this one is not getting any dormancy. It's receiving nutrient solution and watering as usual, um, but it is doing really, really well putting out a new growth. So I'm curious to see how this progresses and evolves. Um, moving on to number 37, this is the no ID foul that I used in my urea versus urea free experiment. This guy here is doing really well. This was the urea free representative and it's just been slowly but surely putting down new roots and acclimating really, really well. It's sibling, however, number 38 in the collection. This was the one that was receiving urea based fertilizer. This one struggled. You can see it's super, super wobbly inside of the container. It's not well established. All of the roots in this container turned black, which was um, a source of pretty big concern for me. But just recently, a sign of hope. Look at these new roots it's putting down. So that's wonderful, but you can definitely see where the old ones are just kind of decaying. It's not super cute. Um, over this way, I have number 39. This is my Zygonesia Sinosia Bluebirds. And I had to recently treat this one for brown rot. I will link the video below in which I did that. But it's just doing wonderful. The pseudobulbs remain super plump. The root system is happy, healthy, and continuing to reach downward. 
This one is just living its best life and seems relatively unbothered by the transition to semi-hydroponics. So let's hope things stay that way. Moving on to number 40, this is my uh, Dagar, Dagar Moara Winter Wonderland White Fairy. And it is doing, it's questionable. So this flower spike would indicate that things are going great, right? It's super close to opening, I don't know if you can tell. Um, or it is in the process of opening. Wow, look at that. Um, but I am probably gonna clip off this flower spike shortly. I've been going back and forth in my head about it, but look how desiccated the pseudobulbs are, you guys. They look like little prunes, like they've been in the bath for three years. Um, they are not, it's, this plant is not investing in a new root system. You can see its old root system is decaying out, but it's not replacing it with anything. And it won't do that until I force it into active growth mode by clipping off that flower spike. So that is what I'm going to do. On to number 41, this is my Ganlin Golden Apple Phalaenopsis. This is a cakey that I took from my friend Jen and Jack during their wedding. And it is just adapting so beautifully to semi-hydroponics. Look at that new root system down at the bottom. All of that is new growth. So it seems very unbothered. It seems super happy. Plus its leaves used to be a lot more limp and now it's just like standing up to salute the sun, which makes me very happy. So that guy's doing well. And number 42, my Spathoglottis plicata. Ever since I removed the dead and decaying matter, it seems to be, I don't know, it just seems happier to me, but that just is speculation. So we'll see how this progresses. We are in the home stretch and we are taking it down to number 43. This is my Encyclia tempensis. And my flask babies seem to be doing really, really well. Um, honestly, I still feel like I have no idea what's going on. There have been a few that I've um, snatched out of the LECA because they are starting to rot, but they've been super few and far between. Um, I just, I hope I'm doing the right thing by these plants and they seem pretty content and happy. Um, especially this guy over here. This is the one that I potted individually. This one just seems really pleased with life. Um, but again, this is all speculation. I don't know what I'm doing with this and I'm just trying my best. So we'll see what comes of this. Um, and that takes me to number 44, the last in the collection. This is my Epidendrum Magnoliae and Encyclia Tempensis Alba hybrid. You can see the one that was potted individually. It, it's suffering from some blackened tips on the leaves, but all of them are. So I, I'm not terribly concerned about that. The root system seems to be doing just fine. And when I take you over, these guys also seem to be doing just fine. Um, one thing that I've incorporated to my routine with these little seedlings is taking the lid off and allowing them to have about 15 minutes to breathe normal air um, daily. And I think that's important because it needs to have moving air. So the, mo the air that's inside of this dome gets trapped and it, I think it becomes stale. Um, it's just something that my intuition is telling me I should do. So I'm doing that and it seems to be helping. The plants are responding positively. So with that, that concludes the December Orchid Collection update. 2017 has been such a crazy year of up and downs, um, but I'm so grateful to experience everything that I've experienced in your company. You guys are so wonderful. I love you all so much. I hope you had a beautiful Christmas, a uh, happy Hanukkah, a beautiful Kwanzaa. Whatever it is you celebrate, know that you are loved and you are special. And I hope you have um, another year and many more years of happy growing. I love you guys so much and happy new year. Bye.